Onion rings. Girlfriends never steal those. And that's good news, fellas, because you'll get to enjoy these flavorful beer-battered onion rings. Oh, and did I mention there's vodka in it too? Yep, make sure you say that part extra loud so it's really unappealing when you pop them out of the fryer. This recipe is extremely easy, and if you have an hour on your hand, you are good to go. First up, we need to cut ourselves an onion. I've got sweet yellow onions here that I'm gonna cut up into half-inch rings. We won't need the smaller inside parts, but we can always save those for later dishes. So pop those in a freezer bag along with any big piece that may break apart as you separate the rings. Also, you might run into this thin membrane in between the rings. Remove these if you can. If not, we'll actually be doing a process later on that will help remove them. These are harmless to eat, but they can be the culprit in the batter sliding off of our onion rings. Once we have all our rings separated, we'll toss them into a large freezer bag and pop them into the freezer for at least an hour, but you could freeze these technically for months, ready to pop them out whenever you wanna make onion rings. This freezing process is not only going to help remove that membrane, but also allow for a more tender onion ring bite. While those freeze, we can make a quick dipping sauce for our onion rings. Combine half a cup of mayo, one fourth cup of sour cream, one fourth cup of ketchup, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, two teaspoons of prepared horseradish or hot sauce, one teaspoon of ground paprika, and half a teaspoon of salt. Give that a mix and then let it refrigerate so all those flavors can maximize. After the hour is up, I took my onion rings out of the freezer and popped them into this colander here because now I want to rinse these with basically slightly above room temperature water. Just long enough to thaw them out. They'll be noticeably loose here, but you'll also notice that the membrane almost slides right off with very little resistance. Hooray science! Which by the way, I've mentioned his name before, but he should totally get credit for this. J. Kenji Lopez Alt on YouTube. Make sure you check him out because he really is doing the Lord's work when it comes to food science and he is dishing out some great facts and recipes. I laid my onion rings on a paper towel and then gently patted them on top with one just to remove any excess water because as you know, or if you want to find out later, water and hot oil do not mix. Next is our batter. I've got one cup of all-purpose flour, half a cup of cornstarch, one teaspoon of baking powder, and one fourth teaspoon of baking soda. And then here I decided to use this Cattleman's Grill blackening seasoning. I was really just curious because I love all things Cajun flavored, but you could keep this simple with salt and pepper and some paprika if you wanted to, or try a seasoning of your own liking. It is up to you. I ended up using a heavy, and I mean heavy tablespoons worth. Next, our wetness. I've got three fourths cup of Bud Light, ice cold. Use whatever beer you want. I suggest a lager, I just, you know, this was the only, the only thing I could find today was Bud Light because it was Super Bowl weekend and all the beer was gone. One fourth cup of Tito's vodka. These two combined will make for a crispy batter that is smooth in texture. I believe you could substitute with club soda if you're trying to avoid alcohol, but hey, this is poor choices. We like to drink when we cook. Now, even though we have pretty much a cup of liquid, we're not going to need to mix in this entire amount. It's just better to have more than not enough because we really just want to get the batter to a consistency like this, like a thick paint almost. We also don't want to overmix the batter because it can begin to take on more of a leathery texture versus the crispy texture that we're looking for. So you'll have to kind of find that balance. Also, I would not suggest drinking the leftover beer and vodka mixture, but hey, YOLO, I guess. Now to my deep fryer, I've got some vegetable oil here, heated up to 375. You can do this in the Dutch oven if you want to on your stove. And also make sure your oven is set to 200 degrees so we can keep our rings warm in there until they're all done because you're most likely not gonna be able to fry all these at once. Pop your rings into the batter and then using a fork, I lifted them out and over into our oil. This just keeps my hands clean and also minimizes the finger footprint whatever you want to call it, the amount of batter that's not on the onion ring. And I have my basket already down so it won't stick. Beer batters definitely have a higher tendency to stick, just FYI. And then don't go too far. We're just frying these until golden brown. After they're done, I'll pop them onto a wire rack, which will then be stacked onto a sheet pan and put into the oven. Again, I wanna keep these warm. I have a paper towel here just for now, just to catch any dripping grease, but we don't want these rings directly on any paper towels. That'll create steam and then ruin our hard earned crispy crust. Finish up all your onion rings and then honestly, that's just it. Break out that sauce and enjoy. Hey, this is Poor Choices. We have a Patreon. The link is in the description. One dollar a month is all we ask for. It really helps support us here in these inflated times. And hopefully, hopefully the construction in my neighborhood will stop so we can get back on camera because man, it is loud as hell, even on the Saturdays when I'm filming this. Poor Choices, I'll see you later.